I've known our best driver's car co-host Justin Bell for quite a few years now. He's a Brit, I'm an Australian, and we're both having the time of our lives living and working in America. Justin and I got talking a while back, swapping stories of the epic drives we've both done over the years. Some of his drives have been a bit more epic than mine. After all, he won the GT2 class at Le Mans in a Dodge Viper GTSR in 1998. But, ironically, I've done more miles on Europe's great roads than he has. In fact, he mentioned he hasn't really done a European road trip since he was a kid, back when his dad Derek, who drove for Ferrari in Formula One and remains one of the winningest drivers in Le Mans history, used to take him along to the European races. You know, the last time I was here was when I was 17. Dad had raced a Ferrari in Formula One. And that, I decided, was something we had to fix. A road trip from Munich, Germany to Maranello, Italy, with a couple of fun detours along the way, seemed like the perfect solution. Good roads and great scenery. But what to drive? <laughs> The ZR1 is the fastest ever production Corvette, and in terms of performance, can proudly hold its head up high against her European rivals. And just like that European sports car elite, the ZR1 benefits a huge amount from the technology transfer from the race program to the road car. In fact, they have to detune this engine to conform to the Le Mans regulations. So with a supercharged V8 producing 638 horsepower, a 0 to 60 in the 3.4 range, and a top speed that'll make you giddy, the ZR1 is indeed a very fast car. But in the words of Angus McKenzie, when we were trying to find a car to bring on this European automotive invasion, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. No, you don't. You bring a ZR1. No, I just realized something. What's that? Well, it's quite odd. I know these roads so well, but equally, I know the ZR1. I mean, I raced its sort of predecessor. I've done so much track work in it, but I, I've never done the two together. So it's this sort of odd juxtaposition of, of knowledge base, but in an unfamiliar sort of combination. What well, do you want me to drive then? Not bloody lightly. Christ, an Australian driving a Brit in an American car in Germany. What a combination. It sounds like an international goulash of driving talents. The world in harmony, I would have thought. I don't know about harmony, mate. Well, we certainly got some attention as we've been uh, driving. Yeah. And well, I mean, we're in, we're in Porsche country here and we're the, we're the intruder. Back in the States, you know, Corvettes are everywhere. But over here, you know, spotting a Corvette on the road, spotting a ZR1 on the road, it's like uh, seeing a Lamborghini in Albuquerque. It's not something you see every day. But the Corvette isn't necessarily a complete fish out of water on European roads because we do have some extraordinary roads that were purpose-built for extraordinarily fast driving. I mean, right now we're just working our way through the countryside, but I'm looking forward to finding something with a bit more sort of uh, opportunity, you know, to misbehave. Behind me is a very small part of Germany's Autobahn network. It's the third largest national highway system in the world, behind China's and, of course, the United States. And the US interstate system was, in fact, inspired by these super-fast roads, some of which were built in the 1930s. You see, when Allied commander Dwight D. Eisenhower entered Germany after World War II, he realized the strategic value of a connected national highway network. And the US interstate system he had built is perhaps the most enduring legacy of his presidency. It's absolutely amazing, you know, we've been averaging between 120 and 150 miles an hour for the past like 15 miles. And now I'm doing 150 and actually I got used to it. It's extraordinary. Only 150? Yeah, 150 is bloody fast. This thing will do 200, you know. It won't. Really? Yep. An American car, 200 miles an hour. You're in the fastest Corvette ever made on the fastest roads on Earth. Well, you're saying that like a bloody challenge. All right.
180. Sixth gear, 190. 194. Oh, someone pulled out in front of me. Bugger! Oh, I was getting there. It keeps your attention though, but, but you know, 195 is as fast as I have ever been in a road car on the open road. That is amazing. Yeah, but this thing will do 200 miles an hour. So you're saying you could do better? I'll give it a go. All right, you're on. I am for you. I'm actually pretty aggravated too that it wasn't me. <laughs> that was an experience. I'm all tingly. That was an experience. So it's the first time you've ever been 200 miles an hour on the road. I wasn't driving. Brilliant. Fantastic. Wow. Well, do I get another go? No. We've got to be in Italy for dinner. Bad luck, mate. I'm hungry. See that squiggle running up the side of the mountain there? That's the famed Stelvio Pass. Built in 1820, this narrow, winding road takes you up and over the Alps and into the heart of Italy. 48 hairpin turns in less than 10 miles, gradients of up to one in nine, and a summit of over 9,000 feet. But I think taking 638 horsepower of supercharged Corvette up this road is gonna be a bit like taking a howitzer to a turkey shoot.
From the top of the Stelvio Pass, it's a spectacular run down a narrow valley into the heart of northern Italy. And our final destination, Maranello. The ZR1 owns these narrow, twisting roads. There's instant power when you want it, the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup tyres offer a ton of grip, and the massive carbon brakes barely raise a sweat on the steep descent. The ZR1's not just a stunning supercar, it's a pretty good Grand Tourer too. The rest stops here are like gastronomic compared to what we're used to. I thought you just visit all the rest stops because you've got short range tanks. You have to go for a key <laughs> every five miles. Legendarily, the Angus Mackenzie from Motor Trend does not like to stop for a pee, which is why I choose to drive all the time because there's sod all you can do about it. You should only stop when the car needs gas. So are you a good passenger, generally? No. So those moments when I think you're just being reflective and no. pondering yeah. the fate of the world is actually discomfort? Yes. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't even need to say the yes. Well, I've been to Ferrari's hometown a few times, but I never thought I'd be here in a Corvette. Me neither. It's quite ironic, really, when you think about it. When I was racing for Corvette back in 2000, Ferrari were actually one of our main rivals. I think I was last here for the launch of the 612 Scaglietti. Ooh, that must be fun, because I love that car. But you know, the last time I was here was when I was 17. Dad had raced a Ferrari in Formula One, and as the old man was getting old, wanted to come here one last time just to meet him. So he bought me, I just started racing. I remember so clearly his office, the big desk, he was backlit as the light came through the window, and this huge crystal prancing horse on the desk. I didn't realize it at the time, but obviously got to appreciate it as I got older, quite how lucky I was. I'm not going to be able to top that story, but uh, just pull up here. Just, just hang on. Well, here. Yeah, just, just All here. Right. All right. Just here I am. Wait there. Don't go away. Right. Don't know what he's up to, but seeing as where we are, could be good. <laughs> now what next? I know a road somewhere. Follow me. That's actually pretty cool. One of my childhood dreams has not just been met, but blown up in a good way. Angus managed to blag this brand new Ferrari 458 Italia from right inside the Maranello factory Ferrari gates itself, which in my opinion has just made this road trip get even more exciting. Now back in the States, I've been lucky enough to spend quite a lot of time behind the wheel of the 458, both on the road and the racetrack. And I can emphatically tell you that that is one of the best sports cars ever built. And not only does it look sublime, it has performance levels that will blow your mind. A four and a half litre V8 that revs to 9,000 and produces 562 horsepower. And inside, the story is just as exciting. This one has red carbon fiber, but I've got to share the steering wheel with you. Designed by Michael Schumacher to make you feel like Michael Schumacher, guess what? It does its job. But perhaps the thing I'm most excited to see when we get our white ZR1 on the same Italian roads as this flaming red 458 is that they actually share very similar top end performance levels. Zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds and a shade over 200 miles an hour, which in my opinion makes them both super Super duper cars. And did I mention that we actually got the keys to this from inside the Ferrari factory, just feet from where they made it? That, my friends, is a memory. I almost feel as though my hair is thicker, my chest is larger when I drive this car. It's definitely a manly moment. Oh no, he's got my gun! That's what happens when you sleep on the job.
paddle shifts rule. I'm a little bit old school most of the time in that I really think that you sh to be a real man, you have to use a six speed. But this seven speed gearbox would have been exactly what I need on the Stelvio Pass. two cars truly are supercars and you know what you said earlier you're absolutely right they arrive at the same place through very different routes to me they're extensions of the people who build them when i'm driving the ferrari up through these italian mountains i can feel through every nut and bolt and strand of red carbon fiber the passion lust and zest for life of the italian people it's truly amazing and the zr1 is all american shock and awe don't get in its way. Thinking back though, from start to finish, this has been a journey of great experiences. Just having the opportunity to take that ZR1 at full speed on the Autobahn. Well, I'm not going to forget taking you to 200 miles an hour on the Autobahn. I have a sneaky suspicion that you're never going to let me forget that. But you were really good and the car was magnificent. Where else in the world could we do that? If you do a road trip to Europe, you must drive on the Autobahn. It's one of the seven wonders of the automotive world. That's a great way to put it. And I guess I did kind of hog the car from that point on. Well, have your arms recovered from Stelvio yet? 48 hairpins in less than 10 miles. I haven't actually worked that hard without a race helmet on in my life. Um, and then when we came across the top and the magnificent Alp views and coming down into Italy, it really brought back the best childhood memories I have of road trips on the way to international races with my dad. But however much fun this has been, I actually have to go. Time to go to the airport. How far is Milan? Uh, it's about 150 miles and we, we don't have a lot of time.